things. For perspective on TD, but also the broader banking sector, let's bring in Evan Manser, president and CIO of Cardinal Capital Management. He joins us now. Evan, thanks so much for being with us. Um, what to do about TD? How are you thinking about this? A very uh, much a core holding for many Canadians. Yeah, and a core holding for us too. We've held TD for 30 years at Cardinal, so it's kind of with heavy heart that we sold it. It's been a wonderful company. Uh, increased the dividend for 28 out of 30 years other than the financial crisis. But we do see risk in it now. And the big risk is the anti-money, the money laundering issue. They had a few employees arrested for a fentanyl money laundering ring, which is obviously not great. But the question becomes, was this something that kind of slipped through the cracks at TD, but could have happened at any bank and it wasn't a, a major issue or uh, was there some serious deficiencies there? And what we worry about with that is we go back a year and a half and there was a regional banking crisis in the US. And during that time, uh, it was like Silicon Valley Bank went first and then a few others. Uh, the regulators were down on uh, hand and knee calling the well-capitalized banks, will you please come rescue some of the weaker ones? And TD was actually going to be buying First Horizon, which was also having trouble. And that uh, that acquisition got cancelled by the regulators, citing deficiencies at TD. And they haven't really come out and said what those were, but it's a bit of a warning sign for us that there are some major issues here. And then we look at the broader market, and and we do see some attractive opportunities elsewhere that don't have this risk. Risk, and so. You know, with heavy heart, we let go of our, our TD investment of 30 years. I mean, I want to underline that point because, I mean, you capped off a gain of nearly 4,000 percent over the last uh, 30 years. So with dividend, and I wonder if that's what made it easier to let go, because you're talking about a company that whether, you know, the dot com that weathered the financial crisis, the European crisis, all of these crises over the last 30 years. So cutting at this moment um, is, is significant. Yeah, and it it it, uh, it didn't make it easier. It probably made it a lot harder for us. I mean, uh, holding a company for a long time, you always don't want to get emotionally attached to it, but it's it's hard when you've had such a good experience with the company. Uh, we've and we have rode it through a lot of these issues, but those ones you were saying, they're all basically sector issues that are hitting all the banks. This one's a little more specific to TD. We still own the other five banks, which we like, and don't have plans to sell. But in, in this issue, it's more, you know, TD trading and maybe a slight discount reflecting these problems. But we worry that there may be more risk and, and, and downside than a lot of investors appreciate. And so we've decided to redeploy the capital. Like more than, so right now I would say consensus is talking about $2 billion in fine, maybe the chance that they can't grow and do another deal. And I've had bulls come on and say, they're a well-capitalized bank so they can handle the fine. And if they're penalized and they can't grow in the U.S., they'll use all that excess capital and just buy back their own stock. Yeah, and we're the, the two billion. You know, it sounds like a scary number, but we agree with that. We wouldn't sell just for the two billion. Uh, the the issue that we've got, the other issue. So you've got three regulatory bodies in the U.S. You've got one in Canada, and they're all essentially competing to do a good job as compliance uh, officers to to help solve this problem. So they're going to be going through and you know setting up camp with TD, going through texts and going through emails, looking to find you know where the deficiencies were on the money laundering. The fear is though you've got this army of regulators going through texts and emails. What else did they find? Did they find there's a problem somewhere else? Uh, or did they find maybe there's not a problem? You know, in Canada, TD didn't do have a money laundering issue, but they did have deficiencies in their in their controls. Did they find other deficiencies? And then how much of a distraction is that to management at, at TD? And, and so, you know, we agree with what the other uh, analysts have been saying, but we also look at it just from a management side and, and how much of a distraction that is. And, uh, and that's our other fear with TD. And we've seen banks go through this and it's, it's difficult when you're in the regulators crosshairs. Does the man management change solve any of this? It probably it probably does. Yeah, it probably helps. I mean, I, I think, you know, it'll depend again how serious these issues turn out to be. There's some signs that um, there is some 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 risk here, but a lot of times, what we've seen in the past, you know, we saw with Wells Fargo, 
Uh, we saw it originally with Bank of America. We, we, we've seen that before where there is a major issue. Often it requires a, a management change for the regulators to feel confident that the issue is really being taken serious and the, the, the management is not sort of trying to protect its past track record. Wells Fargo, I mean, it, that would seem to be like such a broad um, issue that they were facing, right? That upselling of accounts and people not really being aware. And it seems so pervasive to the culture. Um, you know, I listened to the TD conference call and they were as clear as they could be saying this is just a U.S. issue. We know where we failed. We don't think that this is a broader uh, beyond just the U.S. issue, but it sounds like, Evan, are you subscribing to cockroach theory where there's one, there's many? Uh, a, a little bit. And, you know, I, I guess the, 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 the Warren Buffett line has, has always been good that if you've, you, no matter how well you drive, if you've got a, a traffic cop following down the highway for 2,000 kilometers, <laughs> they're probably going to find something you did wrong. And so we're a little bit concerned uh, on that point. Um, but, uh, you know, I think TD is ultimately a, a reasonably well-run bank. It's it's just we've seen before when you've got all these regulators, you know, looking for things, they're they're going to find they're going to find something. It's their job to find something, and then the risk is that they uncover more than than people hope for. And that's what we've seen before. Even the Wells Fargo issue, uh, you know, it was upselling to start with, but you know they found more and more issues and they went through a number of ceos there before i think they finally got someone good in place there now but uh they're difficult issues to go through let's put this elephant behind the curtain for a moment and just look at the operational results of td you know they fared well in a number of categories did you did you take comfort well you didn't take comfort in that because you sold the stock but what did what are you taking from that that you think might apply to your other uh, bank holdings or do you have the trigger ready to sell all of them, Evan? No, no, we're, we're pretty comfortable with the other ones. And I, I think, you know, th th this issue hasn't really uh, crept into TD's uh, near-term results, which we weren't expecting it to. Um, I think that there was a lot of positives there. The, the, uh, the, the risk on the lending, the provisions were fine. The investment banking has been great. Asset management has been great. So they had they had a pretty strong quarter, which we were expecting, but I think it's a good read through to the other banks. All the banks are well capitalized, including TD. So they, you know, as you mentioned with TD, they'll all have opportunities to buy back shares. Dividends are fine. So we feel pretty good about the the rest of the Canadian banks. Um, again, not really about short term results, more about that long term risk. Um, before I let you go, one of the the more controversial names um, lately has been Gilden. Of course, tomorrow is the AGM, and it looks like it'll be the triumphant return of Glenn Shimondi. How are you thinking um, about that? I imagine, you know, the pressure must be really high now that you fought to come back to the company. What are you going to do? Uh, well, I, so I, I think this is the first time that I've talked about Gildan where there hasn't been huge controversy. So it's kind of nice. It's a bit of a relief. I, I think for 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 Glenn, uh, we have spoken with him, and I think he's probably pretty reinvigorated right now. Very excited to come back. You know, Gildan was already a good company, doing well, while they obviously had this misalignment with the with the board. I think we've got past that now. There's they, they they put out a plan. Browning West put out the plan, but it was with endorsement from from Glenn, and uh, everyone's on the same page. The management, the CEO, the board, the shareholders. I think they're excited and energetic. I think they've got something to prove, and I think it's a great plan. So we're still sticking around with Gildan, and we think there's lots of upside from here.